Hello, I'm Peter Vaughan, and today I'm at Loudham's in Nottingham to test this latest motorhome from Malibu. Now, regular viewers will know that only a few weeks ago I was testing a Malibu camper van. But this brand doesn't just build camper vans, although that's where the name originates and perhaps where it's best known. But Malibu is a brand from Cartago and it also builds motorhomes, both low profiles like this T490LE and A-Class models. In fact, it offers just four layouts, three of them with single beds in different overall lengths and one island bed model. And each of those four layouts is available as a low profile or an A-Class. T for low profile or I models integrated for A-Classes. So this is the T490LE, the longest of those single bed low profiles. So here we have a motorhome that's 7.45 metres long, 2.27 metres wide, just a tad narrower than the norm, and 2.94 metres high. But where does it fit in the grand scheme of single bed low profile motorhomes? Well, this is not like a Corrado to a Hymer. This is not in any way an entry level motorhome. It's still very much a premium brand Malibu. So although in theory, this model starts at 84,560 pounds, that in the usual German fashion is very much just a starting point. A starting point to which you'll want to add the touring pack at £8,870. And that includes the gloss black grille, a higher output alternator, comfort cab seats, dashboard trim, a Pioneer DAB radio, the four and a half metre rollout awning, a second large garage door, a midi hecky skylight over the lounge, the Truma CP Plus control panel, the SOG toilet vent, a premium 2.0 habitation door, USB sockets in the bedroom, a 24 inch TV, and wiring for solar and satellite. And I'm sure I've missed something off that list. All that also adds 120 kilos to this vehicle's unladen weight. So although in theory, you could have one of these as a three and a half ton motorhome and drive it on a standard car license. You probably would struggle for realistic payload, especially if you wanted to use it for more than two people. And if you wanted to use that rear garage. So this one's replated or it's on a heavier chassis, the heavy version of the Fiat Ducato chassis. And that gives it a maximum gross vehicle weight of 4,250 kilos. And even with all the options on this one, you've still got a payload of over a ton. In fact, 1,049 kilos. So plenty of payload for once. But you've also got plenty more options. In fact, the total of options, including the touring pack, comes to 26,370 pounds. Taking the total price, to 110,930. Now, not so long ago, that would have seen me going <sighs> and our insurers having a similar reaction. But now, in the world of 2023, motorhome prices have shot up and a lot of premium motorhomes are a lot more expensive than this. So be in no doubt at all that this is very much a premium German motorhome. You can see that in everything from the aluminium of the skirts to the curve of the side panels where they go over to meet the roof. That's just like you'd get on a more expensive Cartago model. And then you've got that rain channel along the top of the roof to deflect rainwater. You've got these Sites S4 framed windows as well. And the body uses aluminium for the sides, GRP underneath to protect the underside and GRP on the roof 
to prevent hailstone damage. Walls are 33 mil thick and have RTM hard foam insulation. And it's all backed up by a 10 year water ingress warranty. One thing that you don't get as standard though is the alloy wheels. They're 790 pounds extra. So taking a look along the near side, and the first thing, of course, is that, well, as you'd expect in a Catargo, you've got a proper storage and heated double floor. Now, you've got up to 47 centimetres headroom at this side, but the storage goes right the way across the vehicle, underneath the habitation living area, and at at minimum, you've got 14 centimetres of headroom right across the vehicle there. You can also see the substantial steel frame for the rear travel seats. Then beyond that, well, here's your gas locker. And look how low to the ground that is. So no more heavy lugging of cylinders that need to go right up here as they do in some vans. And then, your fresh water filler, well, both fresh and wastewater tanks are inboard in the double floor. Capacities are 125 litres fresh and 90 litres waste. Not huge, but pretty generous on the fresh side. And the key thing is, of course, that they're properly winterised. So with that heavy chassis, this is the thing you'll want to see. A huge garage, 1.21 metres wide, 1.19 metres high. You've got these rails which come with eight lashing eyes to secure anything heavy, your bikes or whatever that you carry back here. You've got heating outlet, of course, access to service your water tanks, a single main socket, no 12 volt, and just this one little light over on the off side. Maybe lighting is the one thing that could be improved in this garage. And do note that this vehicle has quite a long rear overhang. So that may affect the way the vehicle handles if you put a lot of weight back here. Maximum weight for the rear garage is 250 kilos. But it's also worth noting all these external hatches have a double seal, inside and outside, so you should never get any dirt or water going into your garage. Looking at the back panel, well, it's quite plain, not unattractive, and these outer trim panels or styling panels, well, they're in four sections, so if you do have a little bump, it shouldn't cost the earth. Then looking down the side, of course you've got your mains hookup socket there, your toilet servicing hatch, and then this skirt locker. Well, that should be very useful for smaller items like your leveling wedges, your mains lead, that sort of thing. Your habitation door we'll come back to in a second. And then here you've got another large opening that goes into that double floor and right the way across the full width of the van. So on the outside, I'm sure you'll agree that this Malibu, well, it's everything you'd expect of a premium German motorhome. And that extends to the habitation door, which has a nice solid feel to it. Now, as I said, this is called the premium 2.0 door. Comes with coat hooks, nice deep window, a couple of little storage pockets. But if you want it linked to the central locking, that's an extra 310 pounds. Electric step, of course, to get in, and then just this small additional internal step. But that step, because it comes out virtually horizontally rather than dropping down, it's quite a high first step if you've got any mobility issues, about 35 centimetres off the floor. But let's now go and have a look and see what this T490 LE offers on the inside. So you come in to what's a typically European style motorhome layout. Twin single beds at the back, ablutions, toilet and shower separate on either side of the van, kitchen in the sort of center of the vehicle, and then this 
typically continental lounge area with an L city side facing seat, just a single one here on the uh, off side, and of course, your swivel cab seats. But there are some useful and key differences. For one thing, look at the shape of the roof. Now, normally with a low profile, you'd expect it to sweep down to about here and any storage in the cab area and the over cab area to be about as useful as a chocolate fire guard. But here, you've got a big cupboard at the front and useful lockers at either side. And because their lockers are not open shelves, you won't be hit on the head by a road atlas or something on the first roundabout. You do still get a sky view, an opening sunroof in the cab area to give more light right at the front. Well, you do if you pay £1,230 extra for it. But another big difference is, of course, that you've got a flat floor right the way through the living area from the cab right back to the rear bedroom. That, of course, is down to the double floor. And when you come into the van, you'll find hatches in the floor, such as this huge one just inside the doorway. Loads of room for, well, could be your beer store, your wine cellar, or somewhere to keep your wellies and your walking boots and all that sort of stuff. It's down to you how you use it, but very useful space. And then you've got this pull-out shoe rack under the end of the sofa. The seats are really nicely proportioned. For once, you don't have to have legs like a basketball player to sit comfortably. Anybody of a normal male or female height will sit comfortably on these seats. And they've got decent shape to the backrest too. Quite firm, but comfortable nonetheless. And doesn't the rear travel seat look so much better for the fact that the seat belts are hidden away? When you need to use them, you just undo this Velcro to flap and there they are. And the good news continues because it's lovely and light in here. Not only have you got that sky view over the cab if you pay for it, but you've got this wind up midi hecky. Notice it's the wind up type, not the cheap push up type that so many manufacturers seem to try and get away with. And lots of down lighters for artificial light. Not that this is a dark vehicle, the wood tone is quite light. Um, this is the Bellagio furniture. Um, it's the only option in Malibu and uh, it's called Noble Cherry with this gloss ivory finish on the top locker doors. Not too much chrome, just a bit for the handles, positive locking on those top lockers and really substantial sprung hinges as well. So everything feels nice quality. Malibu says that its furniture is mortised and screwed together as well for extra rigidity. Upholstery, well, this is the Santorin finish. It's one of five no-cost option upholstery, so you don't have to go for anything as pale as this if you've got dogs or children. And there are half leather and full leather options as well. Down in that underfloor storage compartment, you've also got your uh, wastewater drain valve. So that's never going to freeze. Good if you're serious about maybe a ski trip with your motorhome. And then if you're bored in the evening, well, the TV isn't up in the sky. It just pops up from behind that settee. Very neat. Best places to watch will, of course, be sitting back in this sofa or in the swiveled passenger seat. A driver's seat won't quite swivel around a full 180 degrees, but you can get the passenger seat right round if you want to put your feet up onto this sofa. So, all in all, of its type, this lounge is pretty much perfect. Ah, not quite, because I just find this table a bit too bulky. Now I know some people don't like fixed tables at all, but I think they work really well if they fold in half. This one doesn't, and although it slides and you can twist it to have it running across the vehicle or lengthwise, for me, 
it's just a bit too big. So the kitchen and this being a German van and us being British, I'm sure you'll expect loads of criticism, but no. For a start, the oven, yes, you have to pay extra for it, 940 pounds, but it's not in a daft place up above the fridge freezer. It's exactly where you'd want it. Just under counter level. It's a set for duplex, which we've seen a million times before. Works perfectly adequately. Combined oven and grill. The hob looks quite swish, doesn't it? It's three burners and it calls itself a profi gourmet. So hopefully your other half is a better cook than me. And then the sink, well, that's got a split lid and the larger section lifts off and becomes a very useful shelf. A bit more worktop because there's not a vast amount of worktop in this kitchen, a bit in front of the sink. And then unusually it sort of wraps around in this sort of almost U shape, I suppose, with a bit more space over to the left of the hob. But it is quite a small area. So yeah, it all works quite well. And you have got this shelf above the back of the rear travel seat as well. What's really, really good is storage. In here, you've got a rack for four bottles of vino. You've got a large drawer, or a deep drawer underneath the oven, and then two bins alongside that. But the key thing is over here, you've got three really good size drawers, top one, fitted out for cutlery and utensils. More storage down here in the double floors, another access area into the double floor. And then over on the other side, you've got a deep drawer, perhaps here pots and pans, good size that is, underneath the fridge, which is huge. It's 153 litres Dometic fridge freezer with the two doors, separate door for the freezer compartment. And both doors, open either way. So that's a nice top of the range automatic energy selection fridge. And then over on the other side, again, big top lockers. And here you've got your optional uh, capsule coffee machine and it comes on a little slide out plinth. That, if you want it, is £290. And then finally, there are plenty of coat hooks in this van. On the door, by the door, and more here. Very practical. Before we move on to the washroom, I should just add that there's a single main socket in the kitchen in the corner above a useful area of worktop, so that's okay. And then moving back, as I say, into the washroom area, well, the toilet door does the usual thing of closing off the back of the van and it's lockable from the inside as well. And then over on the near side, you've got the shower cubicle. But before we go into more detail, I'll just show you that you can also close off the bedroom with these sliding doors. The only thing then is that it does make access into the shower a little bit narrow if you've eaten too many pies. The rest of the time though, access is good and the shower is also a good size with plenty of headroom. I think mm. it's about 1.93 meters pretty much throughout this motorhome. And for once there's no big step up or down into the shower. You've got this rotating shower door, which just completes with this little flap that attaches magnetically. corner shelves for your shampoo and conditioner and so on, height adjustment on the uh, shower head and a roof vent above with this little hanging rail for any wet gear that you're likely to have. Even two drains in the shower tray itself, so full marks all round. Then on the other side of the van, well, there's no shortage of shoulder or leg room on this loo and it's not on a plinth, so again, you don't need super long legs. Wash basin is a really, really good size, and you've got this useful worktop alongside, as well as soap dispenser 
and his and hers toothbrush mugs. What I really like, apart from these sort of Hollywood style backlit mirrors, well, much more practical is that you actually got fiddle rails in those top lockers. Roof vent above, robe and towel hooks, and one of those fancy little toilet roll dispensers that pokes out through a hatch in the door. Have you spotted the good bit yet? Yes, MMM magazine, of course that is the good bit because MMM brings you these videos and campsite reports, accessory testing, travel features, everything about motorhoming, whether you're an experienced old hand or a newbie to the hobby. But no, what I meant was that in this van, I can sit up and read my MMM magazine because I'm not banging my head on a cupboard. You've got these tip up sections to the head of the bed on each side so you can comfortably sit up, whether that's to read or watch a TV, watch a TV program. If you install a second TV, there's a TV point. I think that's another option over on that side at the foot of the offside bed or maybe have breakfast in bed. It's a great feature anyway. Rest of the bedroom, well, everything you'd expect. More top lockers, again, positive locking with nice sprung hinges, a roof vent, reading lights, as well as these down lighters. So a nice environment. Bed sizes are good too, 1.95 meters long by 83 centimeters wide, which is six foot five by two foot eight and a half. And then you've got this center section, the Malibu blanket, well, that's the world of sleep option, another 300 quid or so, which I think includes the cushions as well. But this center section can extend, and that's quite clever. So in standard form, you have a couple of steps making for easy access to the single beds. And the center section, center mattress between the two single beds is 1.12 meters long. But the steps can slide forward. And then that panel comes forward like that and a cushion goes in on top to extend the bed or the center of the bed to 1.57 meters, making this effectively a really huge double bed. And the extra cushion even stores neatly strapped away inside the near side wardrobe. And then completing the bedroom area, you've got twin wardrobes, one under the foot of each of the single beds. And both of them have both top access and conventional front access, and they're a really good size, not only in width, but also in depth because they drop down into the double floor. And you won't feel shortchanged, whichever wardrobe is yours, because they're both a really good size. The beds at the back aren't your only sleeping option. In fact, if you're going to regularly use this Malibu as a four berth, I'd go for the electric drop down bed option, which gives you a double bed over the lounge for 2,030 pounds. But if you only occasionally need extra sleeping capacity, then you might go for the lounge bed option at 530 pounds, and that's what's fitted here. You simply need to lower the table Pop that cushion back in now. This infill cushion unfolds to go in on top. Now, normally these lounge beds are an absolute nightmare. They're lumpy, uncomfortable, and a pain to make. But this one, well, it's really simple. So the size makes it more of a three berth and a four berth. But I do like the fact, not only do you get cab blinds, but these curtains as well, makes it rather more homely. Now I think it's time to go for a drive, but before we do, just a quick word again on spec, because this vehicle has the power badge on the grill. That means it's got the 180 horsepower engine rather than the standard 140. 
This one's also got the nine-speed automatic gearbox and of course that heavy chassis. Those three options are combined in a 9,430 pound price tag. Mm. A lot, but worth it, I think. And then you've got the cab carpet at 170 pounds and this leather multifunction steering wheel at 560. Now the first thing to note as you drive off in this Malibu is that, like a lot of German motorhomes, the step doesn't auto-retract, but there is a button here on the steering column so you don't have to get up and go back in the living area if you've forgotten. And of course, there's a buzzer to remind you. And whilst I've talked a lot about optional extras, while we're waiting for the train, I can point out some of the things that are indeed standard. So you get manual air conditioning, you get start and stop, you get ESP, hill holder, hill descent control, uh, cruise control, quite a lot of spec as standard. And then this Pioneer screen, well that is an upgrade, that's £810 for the bigger screen with sat-nav but that does your reversing camera as well, and it's a nice big screen. Of course, a key thing is the automatic gearbox, which, as ever with these Fiat's, is really nice, very smooth. You don't really feel the change, well, you don't feel the changes at all. And the performance from the 180 horsepower engine, well, certainly, if I was buying a van like this, I would want the big engine or powerful engine, same capacity, 2.2 litres, but I'd want that upgrade because if you're loading this up to you know, anywhere near its four and a quarter tonne maximum gross weight, then well, you'll really want that performance to, to cope with the weight. Um, I do wonder what it would be like if you really loaded up that uh, rear garage with it hanging out so far beyond the rear wheels, but there are a lot of motorhomes like that and our short test drive with the vehicle virtually unladen, well, of course that's thrown up no horrors at all. In fact, it drives really, really well. But we are now on some minor roads and I'm sure you're aware there's something chattering away in the back. I'm not quite sure what it is because I've taking the grill pan out and the oven shelves. Um, but there is something doing a little song to itself in the back. Well, I never did identify that rattle. It wasn't the hob, it wasn't the oven, it wasn't the shower doors. It didn't even seem to be the slide out steps at the back, so I'm a bit mystified on that one without somebody to go around and try different things while I'm driving. Hmm. I'm getting, I've had to give up. Um, so, what haven't I told you about this Malibu T490 LE? About the only thing I think I've missed is the heating, which is a Combi 6 as standard, so the more powerful Combi, and upgraded here to the 6E with gas and electric. That's an extra £660. What else can I tell you? Well, I'm very pleased with my Super Sparrow water bottle, but uh, back to this motorhome. And yeah, I like it a lot. What don't I like? Well, there's no spare wheel. I'd like there to be a Mercedes chassis option as there is on a lot of Catargos. And I'd like a smaller table or one that at least folds in half. I'd like to have found that rattle. But other than that, I'm really impressed. The lounge is good, the kitchen's good, the washroom's good, and the bedroom's good. And it drives as well as any other Fiat motorhome. And you don't have to be on the Sunday Times rich list to afford one. Yes, it's a lot of money, 110 grand, 
but I've tested motorhomes that cost a lot more and I don't like as much as this one. This really is a van to look at if you want a seven and a half metre single bed motorhome. You won't do much better. Mm -hmm.